Make no mistake, this motion is not about delaying Brexit. It's about killing Brexit. It's not about getting a more opportune time for Brexit. It's about cancelling Brexit. Uh, and to do such a thing, to delay Brexit at this time, would be economically catastrophic. Because for a nation like ourselves, who are coming out of the incredible damage to our economy over COVID, we would then be hit for the next two years with billions upon billions of financial demands into Brussels with no say over how one percent of it is spent. And on top of that, we would lose the flexibility, the agility that our nation will need to plot a way forward economically and would be tied into the bloc which is the most ill-suited to find novel ways of dealing with an economic crisis. Because the EU is so overburdened with its own bureaucracy, it is so stilted, it is so rule-bound that it is the worst equipped to ever show any agility coming out of an economic crisis. And the United Kingdom then would subject itself to that a, a, a situation over which it would have no control. Whereas what we need as the United Kingdom is an opportunity to show agility and to deal with the economy in novel ways which the EU's regulations would never entertain. So I can think of no worse time to delay Brexit than this. But of course there is a way to avoid the need to extend. And that's to get a deal. And if the EU wants to avoid a crash out by its paymaster, then the way to do it is to reach a deal. And they should do it mindful that they stand with more to lose than we in the United Kingdom do. So if they want a deal, if they want to avoid a cliff edge, then get down to business. This really should be make-up time for the EU. And instead of that, of course, they are persisting with trying to pillage our fishing industry, with trying to bind us to what they call level playing field commitments, which will tie our hands behind our backs economically, which will shape and restrict the type of trade deals we can do. Well, if they want a deal, they can have a deal. But it has to be unfair terms. Now, of course, the principle of Brexit remains absolutely sound and necessary. Sadly, it has been largely emasculated for us in Northern Ireland through the iniquitous protocol, but the principle of Brexit remains sound. I greatly regret, I have to say, the slippage I'm detecting from the DUP on the issue of the protocol. This all, of course, started with the foolhardy letter that Mr O'Toole referenced in August 2016, when the First Minister and the then Deputy First Minister laid the groundwork for special status and for ultimately this protocol. And now we've reached a situation where the protocol can only be implemented with the acquiescence and the uh, active involvement of the executive. Well, that presents those unionist parties in that executive with an opportunity to thwart that. Mr. Putz told us, told me an answer to question. He would be providing no infrastructure or our ports. Yet last week, backpedalling, soft peddling, talking indeed the lingo of Remainers about there being opportunity both ways. It does sadden me that instead of standing firm and recognizing the ability to thwart the protocol, that there now is a spirit abroad, it seems, to acquiesce in it. I don't think that's serving Northern Ireland's interests well. Uh, and so I say this is not the time to stop Brexit. This is the time to proceed with Brexit. To stop it would be fatal economically.
for the whole United Kingdom. Thank you.